Welcome back to the wonderful world of astronomy. We're in chapter 19 on our galaxy, the Milky Way, and this is part three, early formation of the Milky Way. And the first question I wanna address is how did our galaxy form? As we ponder the early formation of the Milky Way, a good question to consider is how can we learn about the early Milky Way? We certainly weren't there. We're talking about something that we think happened about 13 billion years ago. There are three main ways that we can learn about the early Milky Way. And the first is looking into the past. Remember that the farther away we look, the further back in time we are seeing. Now, we can't look a far distance to the Milky Way because the Milky Way is where we're at, but we can look across the universe and see the early universe itself. We can see other galaxies and how they formed in the early universe. We can also evaluate current conditions of the Milky Way. So we see that our Milky Way has a central bulge. We see it has a disk with spiral arms and a halo. And we can look out to galaxies far across the universe and see the formation of other such galaxies. And we can also do computer simulations using the laws of physics, of gravity, of electromagnetism, fluid dynamics, all these things. And we can uh, come up with simulations that actually show how a large cloud of gas could eventually become a galaxy like our own. So it's these three factors involved that help us to put together a picture of how our own Milky Way galaxy formed. So with that in mind, our galaxy formed from a cloud of intergalactic gas. So early in the universe, before there were any galaxies, there was just a whole lot of gas out there in the universe. So here we have a protogalactic cloud. Previously in this class, you've learned about the formation of stars with protostellar clouds. And now this is a protogalactic cloud. So a very, very large cloud of gas from which a, a galaxy would eventually form. A protogalactic cloud contains only hydrogen and helium gas. So again, we're talking about the early universe before there were galaxies. Halo stars begin to form as the protogalactic cloud collapses. Why is it collapsing? Because of gravity, just the same as uh, in an earlier chapter when I described how a protostellar cloud uh, collapses to become a star system with a star in the middle and planets. Well, here, this protogalactic cloud is collapsing due to gravity. And as it's collapsing, before it collapses too much, stars start to form. These will eventually be the halo stars. As the protogalactic cloud contracts, the gas that has not yet formed into halo stars begins to settle into a spinning disk. In exactly the same way, the same mechanics uh, as a protostellar cloud collapses to become eventually a star system. Conservation of angular momentum ensures that the remaining gas flattens into a spinning disk. Now, once that gas has flattened into a disk, then that gas forms into stars and those will become disk stars. Stars continuously form in the disk as the galaxy grows older. So we allow billions of years to take place. The star gas star cycle supports ongoing star formation within the disk. The lack of cold gas in the halo precludes star formation outside the disk. Let's now talk about the center of the galaxy. At the center of our galaxy, is what's known as a supermassive black hole, a black hole that is about 4 million times the mass of the sun. In previous lectures, you've learned about black holes that form from the death of stars, and those might have masses of maybe 10, 12, something like that, solar masses. But now we're talking about millions of solar masses. And the existence of this black hole is 
related to the question of how did our galaxy form to be the way it is? And so then there's the question, how did this black hole, this supermassive black hole, get at the center of our galaxy? And we don't know how it formed. We have speculation. There are theories about how it got there. But however it got there, it is there. This region at the center of black hole is called Sagittarius A star. In the sky, if you look at the constellation Sagittarius, it, the ancient Greeks saw it as an archer, but in modern times we see it as a teapot, and the black hole uh, is at the center. We see the Milky Way, uh, it looks like steam coming from the teapot, and this is the center of the galaxy, right about where my marker is, right where it says galactic center. It is a source of strong radio emissions. So we call it Sagittarius A star. The star, which is really an asterisk, just is, uh, it means that it's a source of radio emissions. What we found that contained in a small region about the size of our solar system is several million solar masses. We use telescopes to peer into the center of the galaxy. It's very difficult because we are looking through the disk of the galaxy, which has lots of gas and dust, and we're looking through 27,000 light years of gas and dust. And so it's hard to get light that has come through that distance with all that gas and dust. Once we get to the central bulge, there's a lot of stars. So it's very hard to look through and see what's exactly at the center, but we've managed to do so. The picture on the left is an infrared picture. And then we zoom in more, you can see the scale. Uh, the scale on the right is about 80 light years right there. Radio emissions from the center. So we zoom in more and we see swirling gas near the center. And we zoom in more, here's the picture on the right, this scale right here is just one light year, orbiting stars near the center. We look at all these orbiting stars, we can trace their trajectory, we can trace their speed, where they're going, how far they are from the center, and we can mathematically model and see what is the mass that's at the very center that is pulling them around at the orbits that they're going. Now, we have seen in the past few decades that at the center of just about every large galaxy is a supermassive black hole. The first image of such a supermassive black hole was not the black hole at the center of our galaxy, but rather the center of a galaxy known as M87. It's an elliptical galaxy. In chapter 20, we'll look more at the different types of galaxies. And this is a black hole that is billions of solar masses. Remember I said that the black hole at the center of our galaxy is four million solar masses. This one is billions of solar masses. This is the one of the first images taken of a black hole at the center of a galaxy. So this was from 2019. And what you can see, the dark at the center, that is uh, the event horizon. The light around it would be the gas that's swirling around it that is heated up. And here it is, M87, the elliptical galaxy. It is not a spiral galaxy with a disk the way the Milky Way is, but uh, it's more a ball of stars and gas. And again, in chapter 20, we'll talk about these different types of galaxies. M87 is about 55 million light years away. And in May 2022, we got the first images of Sagittarius A star, the black hole that's at the center of our galaxy. As astronomers were pondering, trying to figure out what is this thing at the center of our galaxy, 
They trace the orbits and mathematically were able to model the orbits of stars going around. So for example, uh, this one particular star, they would track it, its speed, its direction, and then this star, they would track its speed and direction. And the more data you have, the better off you are to draw conclusions. So they found many stars and trace their orbits and they found that the stars appear to be orbiting something massive but invisible a black hole well invisible with visible light but it was a source of radio emissions that occasionally gave off flares of x-rays and what they deduced was that the orbits of the stars indicate a mass of about four million solar masses Sometimes uh, people think when they know about the supermassive black hole, they think of it as that it's the gravitating object, this large mass that keeps everything in the galaxy in orbit around it. And that is not true. Uh, but where that thinking comes from is when you think about the solar system, you've got the sun, which is more than 99.9% .9 of the solar system's mass. It is by far the dominant mass in the solar system and all the little planets going around it. And they obey Kepler's laws where the farther out the planets are, the slower they're going. But the galaxy is not like that. The galaxy's mass is pretty uniformly spread throughout the entire galaxy. The black hole at the center, while it is a supermassive black hole, it is almost negligible in mass compared to the rest of the galaxy. It is not at all like the sun at the center of the solar system. By the numbers, Sagittarius A star, our supermassive black hole, is about four million times the mass of the sun. And by the way, this little notation here, the circle with the dot, that means uh, that's the symbol for the sun. So four million solar masses. The Milky Way galaxy is approximately one trillion solar masses. That includes all the stars, all of the gas, all of the dust, about one trillion solar masses. Four million solar masses that the black hole has is almost negligible compared to the mass of the entire galaxy. The comparison is the mass of a nickel versus an automobile. The, the nickel's mass is fairly insignificant. So uh, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy is not this great mass that's keeping the whole galaxy together. And so here we have our galaxy. We've got the black hole at the center with its four million solar masses, our sun and our solar system somewhere out here. And as I said a few minutes ago, the mass of the galaxy, that trillion solar masses, that is stars, gas, dust, everything else, is pretty uniformly spread throughout the galaxy. It is not concentrated in the center. That is the end of part three on the Milky Way galaxy, the early formation of the Milky Way. Have a great day.